just made an announcement about electronic devices off and out of sight, please. Good, thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the Sheboygan Common Council Committee at a whole meeting for Wednesday, December 14th, 2011 to order. Uh, please call the roll. Bell? Here. Horn? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Excused? Hammond? Here. Hammon? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kopp? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichuk? Riesler? Here. Sampson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweele? Here. And Versi? Here. We have a... Uh, before I stand for the, we stand for the pledge, we are on television tonight, but it's on a delayed basis, <coughs> so we will need our mics tonight. If we could rise for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number four on the agenda is approval of the minutes from December 12, 2011. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the minutes from December 12th. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Next we have item number five, uh, a public forum on agenda items. Does anybody wish to be heard on, in the public forum? Does anybody wish to be heard? And for the third time, does anybody wish to be heard? Nobody for public uh, forum. Chairman's comments, uh, I do not have any at this time. Next on the agenda, we have items for discussion and possible recommendation to the Common Council. Uh, Alderman Hammond, is uh, uh, Ms. Adams still she recuperating? Will be us. Yes, uh, her, her oxygen tank has arrived. She will be joining us shortly. All right, well, we'll move on then. Uh, <clears throat> we'll move down to council doc, uh, item number eight on the agenda, council document number 1648, uh, submitting a communication from Alderperson Boren being a survey of mayoral salaries in various municipalities, and then I referenced the update that we received at the council meeting on 1121. Uh, I think I'll lead the discussion on this, uh, and then we can discuss it together. Our HR department uh, did a... Uh, a survey of some cities around the state. I believe Alder Person Kittleson found one that was even more up to date, but uh, uh, just looking at the list of, of cities that either, either have city managers, that form of government where they do not have a mayor, or a city administrator. Uh, starting up, out up on top, Appleton has uh, runs with a full-time mayor, a salary of $91,000 in benefits, four-year term, no city administrator. And then we have several cities, Beloit, Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, Janesville, who all have city managers, and it lists the salaries there for their city managers. They have no mayor at all, and I believe with the city manager form of government, there usually isn't uh, a mayor unless the city manager would decide to uh, or have the council appoint a part-time person. Uh, Kenosha has a full-time mayor, no city administrator, with a salary of $79,272. Oshkosh is kind of interesting in that they have a city manager uh, hired by the council and the salary of $127,000 a year, and they have a part-time seasonal mayor, whatever that means. And the salary for that part-time seasonal mayor is $6,000, and the older person salary, I believe, is... Uh, $3,750 a year. And then the last one on the list here, uh, Wauwatosa has a city administrator at $115,169. Uh, they have a part-time mayor uh, that they pay, they were paying $22,500 and that included benefits. Now just within the last week or 10 days, the uh, mayor, the part-time mayor in Wauwatosa resigned and took a position with uh, Milwaukee County, I believe, as their development director, but in the development department. It's my understanding that the, the salary in Wauwatosa of $22,500 has been that way without any increases since the early 90s. The new mayor that they're going to hire in Wauwatosa part-time, they're going to increase the salary to $30,000. And that position also includes benefits. 
Alderperson Kittleson, did you have anything you wanted to add? or? Let me just say that we were looking here and we said West Dallas here. They have a full-time mayor, $60,000 with full benefits, and uh, a full-time administrator at $111,000. Um, and their, the population there is 60,000 people. And then it costs, the cost is like $2.84 per person to have that, those administrative costs. There's several cities here, Greenfield, New Berlin, Brookfield, West Dallas, Tosa, Waukesha, West Bend, Franklin, Oak Creek, Mequon. They all, you know, some do have the full, most do have a full-time mayor. West Bend has a part-time mayor, and then they have a full-time city administrator. Um, their population is 30,400 people, so it, uh, you know, runs the gamut there. It's, okay. it's interesting. Does anybody have any on the survey, the one that I went over here briefly and the one that Alderperson Kittleson, any, any discussion on that at all? I'll entertain a motion on document 1648. I would presume probably file it. Move to file. Second. We have a motion and a second to file document number 1648. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. The next document that we have is, uh, I think I see Ms. Adams is in the room, so I think what we'll do is we'll go back up to item number seven is to not keep Ms. Adams waiting much longer. So let's go back up to item number seven. Uh, council document number 1617, submitting a communication from Dimple Adams stating her concerns about the election of older persons for district number five, privatizing garbage collection, committee of the whole meetings in closed session, and the executive powers of the city stopping with the president of the council. Uh, I would entertain a motion to open up the floor to Ms. Adams if she wants to speak. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to open up the floor to uh, Ms. Adams. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Wow, we're a small group tonight. Where is everybody? Uh, Dimple, could we have your address, please? You sure can, and I can hear you tonight. Okay, good. Uh, it's Dimple Adams, 1424 Virginia Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And um, The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, sorry about being late. Ran into a little snag downstairs. And uh, as you can see, I'm having a little trouble today, but I was determined to be here. And I'll tell you why. I love this city. I have been living here since 1976. My children were 12 and 7. Now they are 47 and 42. And I've had two grandchildren that also graduated from South High School. And I go to Alabama almost every year. But I come back to Sheboygan. And my family loves visiting in Sheboygan. I'm very sorry about my voice, but that's why I'm here tonight. I know that, okay, the first thing that I'll just get out of the way right away is I don't care about the garbage thing. You guys took care of that, and it's okay. <laughs> I mean, we had to do what you had to do to get the budget balanced. But I am upset about what you did to Susie Lassard. And I don't think that was fair. And I don't think it was honest. And I think that you left 12.5% of the city without representation. And that's not good for that district. And it's not good for our citizenship. And I don't know what your motives were, but I've got to believe that you must have spoken about it before that night because there was no discussion and this vote came, and it was 10 to 5. So I feel like, shame on you. You were bullies, saying you're not going to play in my sandbox tonight for the next five months. And that's not fair. And I grew up in a moderate household. My father worked for the railroad. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. And we played a lot of games because we didn't have TV and so forth. 
and we all had our chores. And the one thing that I learned at an early age in playing games in my family and in going to school is that you don't cheat and you don't bend the rules. And I'm sorry, guys. I respect all of you for what you do. I think it's, it's notable to give up your time for the meager paycheck that you get to do the service that you do for the city. And I respect that very, very much. And I respect all of you very much, and I appreciate it. But I do have to say that what I think is happening now, and this has nothing to do with the name of the mayor. It could be Mayor John Jones or John Doe, all right? But he was caught in a situation that was not nice, and you've investigated this thing for three months now. I'm the taxpayer, along with 30 something other thousand people living in the city that was paying for that investigation. We're going to have a mayoral election in one month. Two of you have put your name up for candidates, and two of you are related very closely to another candidate. And you're doing all these changes about what we're, what we're gonna do with mayoral position before we have the selection. That's not a level playing ground. But what I really got upset about, I already was upset because this letter was dated the 14th of November. So that's been over a month ago with the meetings and not being transparent with the investigation. And so when I read in the paper yesterday that you had suspended the thing, you know, I thought, great, it's over. And then two hours later, I read the headline again on press and you're telling me it's on hold. No, you can't do that. That is wrong. And I don't know how you think that can be fair. And I want someone to tell me how. And it's not because of who the mayor is. It's because I don't know how to vote. I don't know what the mayor's position is going to be doing. I don't know what the investigation showed. You're keeping information from the citizens. And I want all of you to explain to me how this is fair. And I don't know how four of you can even vote on this stuff. Tell me how that's fair. Please, Mr. Boren, tell me how that's fair. Well, I'm not going to make any comments right now, Ms. Adams, but uh, the only thing I will say is that when we go into closed session, we're discussing uh, very sensitive issues, and it's not only for the council's protection, and I'm not just talking about when we go into closed session about the mayor, about any individual, that's very sensitive material that should not be out there because some of it may be true, some of it may be allegations, and that's a reason why we go into closed session on, the, on those items. I understand the closed session while the investigation was going on, but I read in the paper that the investigation is over. Now, if you found something that you think the mayor has done wrong, then go ahead and start with your hearing now. Don't wait. Don't put it on hold until after the election, because that's not fair to the electric who's going to be voting. Because then if we vote him back in, then you're going to go forward with the hearing. Maybe, maybe not. <coughs> not an equal playing field. Us citizens who have paid for this investigation have a right to know if you're going to have the hearing or not. If you found anything that he's guilty of that sustains the presidential hearing, you cannot put it on hold until the election is over and call it a fair playground. It's not. How can it be fair? We don't have all the information that we need and we can't get it. I was told that once the investigation was over with, we were gonna to be told what it showed. Now, I want, I want you to explain to me 
and not just to me, but to every voting citizen in the city, how it is fair that you hold the information up. If you're going to charge, charge it. If you're not, then let us know what it showed and be done with it. That's, you know, I was taught not to cheat and not to um, stack the deck, and that's what you're doing, in my opinion. And I'm very, very concerned about it. And I wrote a letter to the editor back in September, and it has nothing to do. I would feel this way no matter who was mayor. I would have felt this way with the last mayor. And another thing is, you're doing all of these things without asking the citizens if we want the mayor's job changed. We need a referendum on this. The citizens need to be allowed to speak. We need to be able to decide. So you need to just back up a little bit and quit this. That's just the way I feel about it. I'm not angry, I'm being honest. And if I didn't think it was important, trust me, I wouldn't be here tonight. Thank you all very much. But I expect fairness. Thank you, Dimple. And honestly. I'll, I'll entertain a motion on document number 1617. Motion to file. Second. We have a motion and a file, a motion and a second to file document number 1617. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Can I have one more word, Jim? Go ahead. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Dimple. Christmas, Dimple. Okay, we'll go back to uh, I agenda item number eight, uh, which is council document number 1648. Originally, council document number 1442, submitting a communication from Alder Person Boren being a survey of mayoral salaries in, oops, I'm sorry, we're on number nine, forgot to cross that one off. Uh, council doc document number 1637. Uh, council document number 1637, your committee to whom was referred general ordinance number 39-11-12 by older persons Belt, Boren, and Heideman reestablishing the salary schedule for the office of mayor part-time recommends that a copy of this ordinance be referred to the committee of the whole. And uh, that was a, uh, originally was, was council document number 1441. Uh, Alderman Belt, if you want to lead the discussion on this one, you can, or I've, I've got a few comments, but if you want to go first, go ahead. Well, I'd, I'd like to be able to take both uh, number nine and number 10 together because it's, it's a debatable whether it's part-time or full-time. All right. If Any objection like. to taking those two together? Uh, item number 10 on the agenda is uh, document number council document number 1638. Your committee to whom was referred general ordinance number 40-11-12 by Alder Persons Boren, Heidemann, Koth, and Versi, reestablishing the salary schedule for the office of mayor full-time, recommends that a copy of this ordinance be referred to the committee of the whole. Do you want to start out, Alderman Belt? Well, the, uh, the part-time position, now that we've got a, a full-time city administrator, um, I believe the mayor we could get by with a part-time mayor in the city. Uh, it looks like there's other cities in the, in the state that, that do that. Um, our size, some, some even bigger, some smaller. But I believe uh, we can very easily get by with a part-time mayor. We can save some money by going to a part-time mayor. And if, if uh, my initial thoughts were to have the office of mayor part-time, with no benefits, but looking at the other uh, survey here, the you know with the Wauwatosa, their part-time mayor uh, does get benefits. We can always, you know, put benefits out there. But I honestly don't believe that we at this time need a full-time mayor. 
Thank you, Alderman Belt. Uh, just to follow up on some of your comments for the, for the people at home that maybe don't have the document, uh, the document proposes <laughs> that, and this will not go into effect until 2013 with, with th that mayoral election, uh, that the part-time salary would start out at $24,000 and then ending in 2016, the salary would be up to $25,845. That's a 2.5% increase per year. And the original document said that the part-time mayor would work a maximum of 1,175 hours per year and that the part-time mayor would receive no benefits. Now, using that initial salary of $24,000, if we did include benefits, uh, the, uh, the, the health insurance for uh, the part-time mayor, we would, we would be paying 88% of the, of the health insurance benefit, which amounts to $18,273.58. If the mayor, part-time mayor worked more than 1,200 hours a year, then that then that mayor would be subject to us making contributions to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. Right now, this year, elected officials like the mayor, the city clerk, and the city attorney, uh, the taxpayers are making contributions of 13.3%. Of Next year, with the uh, Walker budget bill, our elected officials will start paying 6.6.5% into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, or half, and that amounts to, with a $24,000 salary starting, that would be $1,596. So that part-time mayor that's starting out with a $24,000 salary, eighteen two for health insurance, and almost $1,600 for the Wisconsin Retirement Fund, then that part-time mayor would be making $43,869.58. So there, that would, that would be, first of all, the original intent of the of the document was a part-time mayor with no benefits, and as Alderman Belt mentioned, if we did go with a part-time mayor starting out at twenty-four thousand dollars, that would be a hypothetical salary. Then, with benefits, that would end up to be forty-three eight sixty-nine. Then, going over to document number sixteen thirty-eight, which originally was document number fourteen forty-two, I ran some numbers on that also. And again, starting in 2013, with a hypothetical salary listed on the document of $45,000, and ending in 2016 of $48,460, and again, that amounts to a 2.5% increase per year. With the $45,000 salary, again, we would, be, if the if our new mayor had a family health plan that would be $18,273.58, and the 6.65% into the Wisconsin Retirement Fund would be $29,92.50. Then with a, with a salary of $45,000 the first year, all in, it would be approximately $66,266.08. Then another hypothetical I, I ran the numbers on is for example, if you didn't want to start out with a $45,000 salary and you wanted to go to a $40,000 salary, again, if that new mayor had a, had a family health plan, we would be paying 88% uh, of that, which would be $18,273.58. And our contribution to the Wisconsin Retirement Fund at 6.65% would be $2,320. So all in with a salary of $40,000, we would be at $61,043.58. So that's how those scenarios on the documents plus an added one with $40,000 would play out. And now I would like to open it up for discussion to think what your thoughts are. Should we go with a part-time position? Should we go with a part-time position? Should we include benefits? Shouldn't we include benefits? Uh, first we have... Uh, uh, Alderman Hammond, I believe. Sure. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, I guess I have a, a kind of a, I, I have a concern with a full time versus part time and limiting the hours of of that position. I have no problem with lowering the salary, um, and we have the debate about the benefits or no benefits. But to tell a a mayor um, who is supposed to be the representative of the city, the face of the city, that once you hit 1,175 hours, you can no longer do ribbon cuttings or 
economic development trips or those types of things, uh, you know, I really have a, I have a problem with that. Um, you know, I don't know how Schedule X, um, which is the 1,200 hours that uh, Alderman Bourne was referring to, works for elected officials, because uh, I can speak for myself. I know I've put a lot more than 1,200 hours a year um, since I became alderman into it, and I don't get a Wisconsin Retirement System contribution. I may file for one now, though. But, um, you know, I, I, I think we, the full versus part-time, um, and again, this might be a Steve McLean question, um, you know, how we can get around the 1,200 hours thing, but I don't want to see us limiting the number of hours that the mayor works. If we got a mayor that, you know, wants to come in and, and at whatever salary we set, you know, work 80 hours a week, great. You know, if they're willing to do it and they do it well, that's the way I think it should be. Um, I don't want to limit the number of hours. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you. Two, two things. I mean, uh, to mimic actually one of those is, was my concern with the hours, trying to restrict that. H how can you restrict that? How do you, is he punching a time card every time he goes into a uh, ribbon cutting or going to a, a meeting? He's not going to be doing that. Um, so I'm actually against kind of the, the, the part-time mayor a little bit in, in theory. The other part is, is it should be a referendum. It should what? It should go to a referendum, part-time or full-time mayor. We should set the new salary, and we should lower the salary for a full-time mayor because that's what we can do right now is lower the salary. And I'm thinking 50, 55,000 because you still want a qualified person because he is the face of the city. He's your biggest cheerleader. He's the salesman of our city. So you still need someone who's qualified, he or she, I'm sorry. So, so you're going to need someone that, that's semi-qualified to be that face of our city to be out there for development and recreation of things and out there trying to promote our city. Going to a part-time scenario and trying to limit hours, you're not going to have that. Not, you don't have that ability. So two things. It should go to a referendum, but we should reset the full-time mayor salary, you know, much, much lower than the, than the 102 it is now, or 76 salary plus the benefits. Um, and my suggestion would be going down to 55 or 60 like West, Al West Dallas yeah. for a mayor's salary plus benefits. So it is much less. Yes, we have a full-time administrator. You know, we're going to be moving forward. Having those two full-time positions are going to complement each other. So we're gonna, it's not a huge detriment to our budget by lowering the mayor's salary and keeping them a full-time position and also going to a referendum. If the people want part-time mayor, well, then we got to discuss it then we got to go forward and, and do what the citizens want. If they want to keep a full-time, well, it's already in place. And the budget's already, already fixed because we have our 13 months ahead of time. So I think as far as moving forward, we should do the two things of setting the mayor's salary, full-time salary, down to 55 or 60, and then also bringing a resolution in for going to a referendum for part-time or full-time mayor. And we can get that on probably in February for the primary or just do it in November because it's a, it's a presidential election, so everybody will be out voting, and we'll get a bigger voice of our city in that time. Thank you. Alderman Heideman, you're next. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, having had the privilege to, of serving a, as a part-time mayor in Sheboygan Falls, I'm going to tell you there are any amount of hours that you can spend doing it. You put into the job what you want to do. Now, I also uh, had the opportunity to sit on the... the Government Structure Committee for over two years. We looked at the city administrator. We brought it to the council. It was voted down, voted down. We finally got, we finally got to where I thought the city needed to go as a direction with the city administrator. But during those discussions, we just said, so what do we do with the mayor? Well, you've got two options here, and I, in fact, I have my name on both uh, uh, recommendations. We either have to decide, one, to go to a part-time mayor, or, or two, lower the salary. There, we cannot exist having a full-time mayor at the salary we have right now, where we basically just appointed uh, a city administrator to do, what, two-thirds of what the mayor was doing before. So it makes sense to take a look at this, and I hope that we can come up to some type of a resolution that our citizens will be satisfied with. But I know the people that were on the government structure committee were both aldermen and citizens and people that worked with the city, and they said, uh, quite honestly, I believe, Jody, if, if I'm not wrong, they said to go to a part-time mayor. But I'm, not, I'm also not uh, certain that we wouldn't have to deal with a charter ordinance for the, for, uh, for the mayor. So we might, have to, we might be involved in having to have the referendum or uh, do something in order to change a charter ordinance as far as what Sheboygan is responsible to have a, a full-time mayor. So we might just be looking at just lowering the salary. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderman Raisler, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
I, I guess, first of all, I would be in agreement with doing the referendum as well. Um, for us to determine whether it's a part-time or full-time, I think should go to the citizens. Um, the problem that I see with it is the timing. If we do it in November, we're going to be stuck for the next four years because we have to have everything set. I believe the, the wages and benefits have to be set before, I would say, March. I think it was 13 months ahead of mm -hmm. time. So even if we could get in on the February one would be the, the earliest and the, the only one that we could utilize it for. But um, I guess one of the problems I have is we, we didn't hire a chief financial officer. All right? We didn't hire a new person. We took an existing person that we have that had his full slate of duties that he has taken on an additional responsibility. So we, we didn't hire someone new to, to relieve responsibilities from the mayor. We took on someone that's going to hopefully lead our city and, and be, again, our chief financial officer. There's still plenty of development and job searches and, and, and business creating that, again, as Alderman Hammond said, we want our mayor to be the, the cheerleader or the person going out and getting these. I mean, I, I would feel terrible if, if we limited this to 1,200 hours and, and a business said, well, we didn't come there because we didn't get recruited to come to Sheboygan. All right, because our chief financial officer, who I'm sure will do a good job, but also needs to help as well. The other thing, and I know that you're not, some people aren't thrilled about this, but if we look at reducing the size of the council down, I think there's going to be plenty of work to go around. All right, I think the mayor's going to have plenty to do. Um, I guess a, a suggestion that I'll throw out there just so we covered all of our ends and I can be satisfied is, you know, I get a, a lot of feelings that it should be a part-time mayor so we get this... Uh, quality of candidates, and I'm not going to say what that quality is or what, what they are, we, we know what they are, um, or we want a full-time mayor so that we get someone who can put the hours in and, and do the job and, and, be, and, and all those, and, and they're, they're two different people. One takes on the four years, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as, as a part-time job, um, and one takes it on as a full-time career for four years at least. So I guess, you know, we do have an, an opportunity here to say, take whatever wage we decide upon, <clears throat> break it down if it's possible to do, I'm not sure it's statutory, we can do it, break it down into an hourly position and basically tell the person who is elected, you have the ability to put this many hours in if you so choose to work full-time, you can have it as a full-time career. If you win the election and you want to work it as a part-time position and you can get the work that's needed done, <clears throat> that's something we have. And then we have no, um, this, no problem with whoever chooses. All right, say, you know, person that is unemployed or retired or wants this as a side position, wants to do it, they could put that amount of hours in at the hourly wage and the benefit package and such. Or if they said, this is what I want to do for a career for the next four years, they could do it that way too. And the last point I guess I'll, look, I'll, I'll say is we, we looked at the schedule. We looked at what other places do. We're, 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 we shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel here. I don't see too many full-time mayors on there for, for $45,000. I see it as, as, a, as a profession and a career of something that is 61 to whatever the, the $90,000 it might be. I, I, I think that for us to look at reducing or cutting the wage in half I think is ridiculous. I don't think we're going to get the quality of candidate. No offense to anyone who's running or plans to run in the future. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Uh, Alderman Matichek, you're next. I, I believe Ben Akron was before me. He's not flashing anymore. <laughs> I just had to go along with uh, uh, Scott a bit um, <coughs> with the ideas, but questions of has this been uh, ran past the, the attorney's office? Has this been uh, properly looked at? Uh, just a couple of years ago, we had um, the Wisconsin had an issue with the sheriff's department answering questions via text on the phone or, or a call, and then the, the, they had to pay out overtime wages, back overtime wages, because the state found that that was working but yet they were not on the clock, but they were working. If we limit the hours that we have the, uh, the mayor as a part-time mayor, and then at the end of the, the year, he's used up all his hours, and let's say that some, we have a huge issue. Well, it would be monitored by the finance department if it was a part-time. That's what it says on the document. And as far as the city attorney vetting this, the city attorney is the one that did these documents for me mm -hmm. as far as... He did both of these documents for me. Did you put but, together how, how other cities handle it, the, the limited hours that they would uh, Well, I guess that would be our I guess that would be our choice. I mean, you could have a part-time mayor, and uh, actually any elected official, whether it be a mayor, the city attorney, or the city clerk, uh, they can basically work as many hours a week as they want to as long as they can get their job done. So if they could get 
for well, example, um, if the city clerk could get her job done in 20 hours a, a week and she wanted to take the rest of the week off, hypothetically she could. So when you're an elected official, <clears throat> you know, you can say full-time mayor, but you might have a full-time mayor that's working 60 hours a week and you might have one that's working 25 or 30. Mm -hmm. You can't really direct an elected official uh, Bush put into, uh, we have minimum wage laws here in Wisconsin, and there's also federal uh, minimum wage for salary employees. If the uh, mayor puts in too many hours, he has to be making minimum wage when you divide up all the hours between the salary. Um, so you can't just have a part-time mayor and say, oh, he can put in as many hours as he wants. Well, he can. Elected officials are different. If you, exactly. uh, if you, if you have a set salary... You know, for example, if we had a part-time mayor with $24,000, that's his salary. And uh, at part-time, you know, if we, took out, if we took out the line in here that it was a maximum of 1,175 hours, uh, back when you were part-time mayor in Sheboygan Falls, Alderman Heideman, you know what your salary was, and you basically, whatever it took the job done, that's what you worked, right? Uh, when I was uh, the mayor, I made less than I made as an alderman here. So uh, I mean, I got a bump up in pay going in. Uh, I mean, so again, you, you know, political office. Each one of us uh, holds an office, and we spend a lot of time working with our constituents and 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 and, and looking at our documents. And it's what that individual wants to put into it. I don't know how you can put an hourly, uh, uh, a number of hours into any position that comes in an elect with an elected official. There's no way you either want to do it or you don't want to do it. I'm not there. To, I'm not there to judge somebody on the job they're they're accomplishing. I just want to make sure that our constituents, since we went to a city administrator, aren't overpaying for jobs that don't have to be done in a position that some of those responsibilities were cut away. So whatever some of the responsibilities that the mayor previously had and lost to that city administrator, he shouldn't be paid for. Now, if he wants to pay, if he wants to work for $40,000 a year and put in 80 hours a week, I'm happy about that. Go, You go for it. I'm not, uh, but, but again, like I said, it's what you want to do with your position. It's, uh, I don't think you can put a, put a number of hours per year on any elected official. So, Did you want to continue, Alderman Matichek? I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's, it's, I just believe we're, we're opening up a whole other can of worms uh, because we're creating this position. We're not fully understanding exactly how the state handles this. As I, I already spoke to the Government Accountability Board, uh, previous, they pay, were paid to take the oath. We're not paid per hour to come in and sit at the meetings. We're paid to take that oath. And for the entire year, you could not show, show up, and you still got the salary because you took that oath. The citizens could, because you're elected official, uh, recall you after that year and, and so on. But you, you're paid to take that oath, and now we're going to be putting a cap on the hours. We're going to be defining this, this position. I don't think this has been looked into properly, invented, uh, given the attention that it's needed to be put together. Um, plus, I'm just concerned about this council is moving towards uh, putting government, of, uh, government employees greater responsibility and in charge of themselves while removing the, the public's uh, voice and, and control. If we're going to be switching to a smaller council and a, sm a part-time mayor um, while creating a city administrator that's making 100 some thousand and make, putting a mayor in charge that, that's making 20 some thousand, uh, who, who really has the power right there, and, and where is the responsibility going back to? Uh... Well, under our, under, our current, under our current system with going to the chief uh, uh, administrative officer, the chief administrative officer has the power now. The mayor has been much reduced in that capacity, including the fire chief and the police chief now reporting to the chief administrative officer. Uh, and and uh, one other thing I want to comment on is... We, we, have a, we have a very talented person in our development uh, department in uh, Chad Pelichek, and I believe we're in the process, if we didn't hire her already, a very talented person in the development area. I don't see where uh, the mayor has to be that, in, uh, in my personal opinion, has to be that involved in development. Uh, yes, if a business comes into town and they want to be part of the process of, you know, the opening and that type of thing, we're paying professionals in our planning department a lot of money right now uh, to do that type of thing, and I don't really necessarily think that that's a prerequisite for a mayor. Uh, I see the mayor as we go forward as uh, presiding at the council meeting, 
the mayor probably still being on the plan commission, probably still being on the transit commission, and then a lot of ceremonial duties. That's about what it's reduced to right now. Uh, a lot of those other responsibilities are gone, and uh, I can't see paying somebody with that many reduced duties uh, any if we're, if we're a full-time. Uh, I think $45,000 is more than fair. Our state legislatures, which are legislators, which are a full-time job, I believe our state senators and our uh, state representatives are making about $48,000 plus benefits. And if, if, I know that I know they haven't hit the 50 mark yet, but uh, so I think for uh, a full-time mayor, if that's the way we want to go, uh, I think $45,000 plus a nice benefit package. Uh, and in particularly in this in this uh, economy, we're going to get a lot of qualified people. And on, by the same token, with a part-time position, uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that would would even take the job at twenty-four thousand dollars, with or without benefits. That's my opinion. Alderman Carlson, you're next. I, I guess I would respectively disagree with just about everything you said there. Um, <laughs> Corey, the, the last part that you talked about is I completely agree with. I, I can't support either of these documents. I, I think a part-time mayor in a city of this size is just um, out of the question, in my opinion. Um, and then cutting the pay down almost, I mean, just about half, I think, once again. I mean, the goal, I mean, everyone should have the goal of moving the city forward. And by cutting, well, cutting the part-time, like I said, is just ridiculous because you're going to get a certain pool of people running for that position. And most of them, I mean... Sure, one of them could probably do a great job, but once again, you're, you're narrowing that pool by a lot. And then even cutting the pay down by, by that much money, you're once again limiting the, the, the talent pool that you want to get. Once again, we want to move the city forward. We need that CEO. I mean, if we want to talk about the city being a business, we need a CEO. We need, we need the figurehead. And, and both of these documents, I think, are just going to stunt any growth that we could possibly have here in Sheboygan. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you. Speaking of referendum time, we have an election coming up on January 17th that I'm sure a lot of people in the city are going to probably be out and vote. Maybe that would be a time to throw it on, Not if we time. could. Not enough time. Not enough time. You're going to be lucky to get in on February if we do. You've mm -hmm. got to have X amount of time before for a referendum. I think it's nine weeks, nine or 12 weeks, something like that, from the time it's introduced to the time it gets on a ballot. That's hot. Okay. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman, Alderperson Kittleson, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, I just wondered, where did these numbers come from? You, you just, for setting this uh, set consulta Consultation with some of the sponsoring Alderpersons. Okay, that's, okay, that's where it came from. Um, because and, and by the way, uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with, what, with what Wauwatosa has been doing since the mid-90s, and I, and I got to stress again, mm -hmm. that mayor down in Wauwatosa, up until now that she resigned, has been working for whatever the figure was, uh, 22, $22,500 $22, with benefits since the mid-90s with no cost of living increase at all. Mm -hmm. And now that she resigned, the next mayor, they are going to sweeten it up to $30,000. And uh, from what I know about the mayor down in uh, Wauwatosa, very dynamic person, very dynamic woman. And she's been in that position for a number of years now at 22.5 with benefits. Uh, it says, though, too, in this other this article uh, that was just printed here, how much is a mayor worth? And they said they took the physicals. And the administrator in Franklin said a more fair comparison to take the physical size of the city and its total valuation. And then you can come up with your salary that way. That's, that's what they said. But my thought is, too, why not keep the, the mayor a full-time position and just set the salary, lower that salary? Mm -hmm. I mean, we could do that as well. Uh, I, I mean, you heard Dimple, and I think, and and I think the community does want to keep uh, uh, the mayor a full-time position. As I go out and about and I'm talking to people, they like a full-time mayor, um, and so therefore we could set the salary, just lower the salary of the mayor at the. Thank, at thank this you, time. Alderperson sure. Kittleson. Uh, if you look at, if you go back to the survey and you look at the one you have there, Alderperson Kittleson. Yeah. They're paying city managers and city administrators a ton more money than we're currently paying Mr. Amodio. 
So eventually, if we have to get up into that league of 127 or 121, and then you're paying a mayor all in over $100,000, you got so, you know, $225,000 roughly for those two positions. And again, uh, with the responsibilities that our mayor is going to have going forward, on my mind, I can't justify having paying two people well over $200,000. I, I just can't with the reduced duties. Uh, who's next here? Uh, oh, just pick one. Yeah, you're flashing there, Alderman Van Akron. Go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would have to ag agree with some of the statements that have been made so far. I believe if um, the city were to look at a part-time position for mayor, I think that is something that the citizens should decide in a referendum-type basis. Um, however, I do think it's appropriate to lower the salary base um, based on the, the duties that have shifted to the chief administrative officer. However, I think for a city this size and, and for all that we are trying to accomplish, I think a full-time mayor is appropriate to provide direction, leadership, vision um, for this city going forward to work in conjunction with the chief administrative officer as well as us as a council to provide the best services we can for our city. I'm in favor of a full-time mayor, but I do think it's appropriate to uh, adjust the salary and compensation package based on, again, a lot of those shift, the, the I should say some of those duties have shifted um, to the chief administrative officer. So I, I'm in favor of um, adjusting the compensation package but keeping a full-time mayor. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Riesler, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'll make two comments. Number one, I, I don't think that we've shifted that much total responsibility that the mayor is not doing. I think the mayor is still doing a lot of these responsibilities and working in joint with the chief administrative officer, which I think is a good thing. Now, that being said, if we want to trim, because all these responsibilities have shifted, I don't think that it's fair to the chief administrative officer then that he's not being compensated more. If he's so busy and has so many of these responsibilities from the mayor and we want to trim off $30,000 from the mayor, are we taking the 30000 and putting on his salary? That's the only fair thing when we talk about fair. If I want you to do more, I'm going to pay you more. If I'm going to have you do less, I'm going to pay you less. And I, I don't think that, that that's necessarily the appropriate thing to do, but I, I don't know. And the other point I'm just going to make is I don't think it's fair to compare them to the, to the state politicians because they receive the mileage, the meals, the benefits that we don't hear. So mm -hmm. when you look at the overall compensation package for them, I think they're they're satisfied and they're doing okay and they're probably equal to what our mayor is, if not more. So that's a, well, a, poor, a I, poor comparison. I would agree to a certain extent, but those are also covering out-of-pocket expenses, those reimbursements, those per diems when they're down there to get reimbursed or staying overnight, and they've got a certain, uh, uh, a certain meal allowance. But the, but the basic salary is, is pretty close. Uh, Alderman Hammond, you're next. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, just a kind of a point of clarification, um, and it's my understanding, uh, we again certainly need to uh, uh, confirm this with the city attorney's office, but um, our mayoral, um, our, our mayor being full-time is a charter ordinance, mm -hmm. which would require a referendum and, you know, the whole nine yards to go um, part-time. Um, obviously, the city's been, had part-time mayors in the past, um, and they've been successful, but you know, again, with respect to our requirements, I, I still firmly believe we need to stick with a full-time mayor. We want to lower the salary and determine what a reasonable salary is. Um, you know, I think we need to be a little bit more um, exacting than just a couple guys getting together and determining this is the number. Um, and I think, you know, we, we, we need to put some faith and credit in the, in the voters here. They're going to determine whether the, the mayor is putting in enough hours and doing enough a good enough job to stay as mayor, regardless of what hours requirement we put on them. Um, so I think, again, we need to focus on what is a reasonable salary and also, um, you know, and stay with a full-time mayor. The, just to clarify, Corey, something, um, the mayor's responsibilities have changed. Um, he's no longer, uh, all the department heads now report to that, to the well, chief administrative I officer. Um, so, uh, it, his duties have diminished substantially. He's got the things he's statutorily required to do, presiding over the meetings, budget, those types of things. But um, he, the C chief admin, in this case, uh, Mr. Amodio, has, has taken on a lion's share of the day-to-day -day administrative duties. So. 
I would and say and I and I don't want to get I don't want to get into what Mr. Amodio's salary is, but he did agree to take on these additional responsibilities for the salary that he's working now. Will that have to be revisited? Possibly, but he accepted the position at that salary. Uh, next, I have Alderman Versi. Thank you. Actually, on that point, may we also remind you that um, when we hired Mr. Amodio, he actually came on at nineteen thousand dollars more than what our former finance director was doing. So, in my eyes. He got an extra pay already to, to accept some extra duties. So I guess that's the way I kind of look at it now. When we assume that position and he comes in that much higher than our former finance director, well, now having those duties added to him, now maybe if you want to in crude terms, now he's making, you know, now he's earning what he's, what he's making if you want to make it that way. But you have to remember that also when he came on. So Now Alderman Riesler. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you. Mr. Chair. Uh, well, let's start it out with baby steps then. I'll make a motion that we continue to... Uh, keep the mayor at a full-time position, and we can debate the salary after that. Second. Maybe we can go baby steps. Here. Second. Second. Third. Third. Fourth. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to keep the mayor's position a full-time position. Who made the motion? Alderman Raisler. Who was the second? Alderman, Alderman Carlson. <coughs> a whole lot of people. A couple. Salary, <laughs> okay. No, no it's a baby step. <coughs> time right now. Come on now. All right. Any, we've got that motion in a second, and do we have any further discussion on whether we want it to be a full-time or part-time position? Alderman Belt, did you want to make any comments yet? Well, I, I, I guess I'd like to see it go to a referendum myself and possibly uh, put three questions out there, one to leave it the same, one to lower the salary, leave it full-time, but uh, reduce the salary, and uh, third one, uh, part-time, and with a much reduced salary. I'm not sure we'd be able to get it on the, the, the ballot in February, but uh, that would be, uh, the option would be to put it out there for a referendum and see what the people have to say. Alderman Belt, would, when, you're, when you're putting that on a referendum, then would you like to attach a number to what the salary is, like full-time X amount of dollars, part-time X amount of dollars, or just changing, keeping it full-time or part-time? Well, it'd be nice if the people knew what the, the salaries were going to be, yeah. I mean, at, at each one of those. Um, but that, that would have to be set by this group. I mean, it's <coughs> as far as what, do we want to leave it the same? Do we want to lower his salary and to what? And if the people wanted to, it a, as a part-time position, what should the salary be then? Older person Kittleson, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. And I just wanted to speak to the the the, the comment that the, yes, the mayor's every day the day-to-day -day operation has changed. He isn't so involved in that, but there's still plenty, plenty to do for the mayor. Um, you can make that job whatever you choose it to be, and there there are lots of things for, for a mayor to do that they could be working full time plus, I believe. So that's just my comment on that. Thank you. Alderman Versi, you're next. For, for your referendum, I believe, actually, by March 1st, we have to have it decided because that's our 13 months out. Mm -hmm. So the February would be, and you wouldn't have to do three questions. It's you want a full-time mayor or part-time mayor. Cut and dried. You don't have to put how much they're going to make because we set that and we already all decided that it needs to be reduced. So you don't have to have the third question. It's going to be a reduced salary, whether it's 45, 55, 65, wherever it's going to be. We're going to debate that. But it's full-time or part-time. That's it. We can lower the, the salary right now, tonight, well, or decide on the price and then forward it on to full council and have that in place. So if they decide, the referendum comes back and they want a part-time mayor, okay, we're going to a part-time mayor, and it's $24,000. So we can do that. It doesn't ha the price doesn't have to be on the referendum. It's just full-time or part-time. That's the question. And, that, and I believe, I think in February, we'll have plenty of voter turnout for that as well. So I think it's a perfect time, and if we have it all set in place, it's going to be, okay, voters wanted a part-time mayor, we're going to part-time mayor. It, it, there's no lag time, there's no discussion time, there's no let's refer it to 50,000 committees and, and think about it another month and a half. It's done. If we make all the grounds, <coughs> groundwork done now, go to referendum. If it comes back full-time mayor, great. Full, it is a full-time mayor. We don't do another thing. We already reduced the salary. So that's what we need to do tonight, and that's what obviously we, what we've started with is keeping it a full-time mayor, and I think getting close to West Dallas's price, you know, is fair. You know, being all in with the benefits, you still want to keep, you know, the candidate pool, 
much greater. So I mean, keeping it 45, I was one of the, one of the initial people that came up with the $45,000. Well, going through and looking at other cities, you know, I've also changed my own view on that. Not by much, you know, I don't think we should go over 60 for them because of the reduced duties, but I mean, you gotta add the benefits in. Right now we're over 100,000. It's 74, 76,000 in salary plus his benefits. Reduce it to 50 or 55, because you remember every year he's in there, he gets that increase anyways. Get a salary increase every single year. So I think if we start at 50 or 55, I think that's more than fair. Our candidate pool will be big, and that's, that's a fair price for what it's moving forward. So I think that's where we should go. I guess throw my, the second motion would be to make it you know, $50,000 starting. Well, let's get the first think, one done with first. Yeah. All right, we'll do the first one Kay. first. Uh, Alder Pritz and Kittleson, did you want to talk on the motion again or? Well, no, I just wanted to read, we talked about West Dallas, or can I, they, they pay 60000 for their full-time mayor and with full benefits, and they have a full-time administrator at $111,000 for a total of 171987 Their population is 60000 and it costs per resident for the salary of the mayor and the administrator is $2.84 per resident. So that's how they've got it broken down. Sixty thousand dollars for the mayor. Could you do a could you do a quick average there uh, of the ones that have a a mayor and a city administrator? What the mayor's salaries are? Do a quick average. Has somebody got a calculator? You got a calculator. Did fifty thousand? I put my I'm sorry, Alderman Racer, I didn't hear what you said. Keep going the full time, part time, and they can. Got the wage for the next right. motion. Just call the question for this. Okay. So we have a uh, we have a motion and a second uh, uh, to go to keep it a full time position, mm -hmm. and I believe Alderman uh, Sampson has called the question. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay. I think we should call the roll on this one. Uh, Alderman Kauf. Belt. No. Warren. Uh, aye. Carlson. Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? <laughs> Your turn. Go My turn. Your turn. Go ahead. <laughs> aye. Aye. Heidemann? Nope. Kauf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwilly? Aye. Mercy? Aye. 12 to 2. Motion carries, so the motion is passed that we stay with a full-time mayor. Now the next thing we want to talk about, Alderman Versi. I'd like to make a motion to set the new mayor's salary at 50000 plus benefits. Uh, Alderman Carlson, are you done with your calculations yet? There, there's only two cities on this um, sheet that have both a full-time mayor and a city administrator, and they're pretty close. And what is that figure? Um, I mean, West Dallas is at 60 and Waukesha is at 70. And then the, okay, and those, both those cities are slightly bigger than Sheboygan, I believe. Right. The, the average per citizen is 276. Okay, uh, did you make a motion, Alderman Versi? What was it? I did. Starting salary at 50000 Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to set the full-time mayor's position starting in 2013 at $50,000. Uh, Alderman Versi, would you want to make a friendly amendment that you uh, you give 2.5% increases per year or uh, not? I mean, how are we going to... I think traditionally, traditionally the mayor has gotten a raise every year of his term. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to do it. When I did talk to Attorney McLean about that, he was concerned about CPI issues, and he thought it would be a good idea to set a definite percent and we'll leave it and at that. And that's why we came up with a 2.5%. And that would be fine. And that's what I was expecting. So that would be a friendly amendment to your motion that we start out at 50 with a 2.5% increase per year. for a year two, three, and four. Correct. Plus benefits. Plus and benefits. plus benefits. Yep. Okay. Uh, Alderman Van Akron. If I can, just for clarification, are you just amending the current document that was submitted, <coughs> the full-time document, rather than right. forty-five thousand? It would be fifty thousand. Would be following that same steps and the same benefit structure. Right. Okay. 
that's all the clarification of it. Not that we're you're Alderman right Carlson. Now. If I could ask you to work on something for us before the end of the meeting uh, to expedite things, if we start, if this passes at fifty thousand dollars a year plus benefits with a two point five percent increase, could you give me the numbers for fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Get up to a little you got the calculator out. Yeah. yeah. It'd just be a little over fifty-five. Right. But do we have the? Because we'll have to have a clean document to go to council. Clean document. All right, we have a motion and a friendly amendment to start the salary out at $50,000 a year starting in April of 2013 with 2.5% increase per year. And did I say plus benefits? Mm -hmm. we, have a motion and we have a motion, and we did get a second on that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Uh, call the roll, please. Oh, Oops, I'm sorry. Alderman Matichek, I didn't... I maybe goofed up your light here. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I, I still think that we don't have uh, all the homework done on this, and we don't have all the data. I mean, you just asked for uh, an average with uh, Mequon in there. Mequon is in Ozaki, the seventh wealthiest per capita county in the entire nation. And now you want to use that as a comparison for, for Sheboygan, Wisconsin, as a city. Uh, we're also the county seat. Uh, uh, we have issues here that are very different from... from uh, Mequon I don't think she other. talked about Mequon. Yeah, you, you, just, you just asked for an average from that list. It, but, Mequon, it was only the two cities that had a full-time mayor. I'm just showing a Mequon shortfall of, of data. Oh, that was, that's, yeah. that's and, not included. I, I believe we need to, we don't have all the information in front of us. Uh, and we're comparing cities, and we're not even looking at demographics, property values, uh, <laughs> other issues that the mayor would have to address rather than... Um, <coughs> Just going ahead and looking at population size, uh, uh, there's a. That's it. Thank you, Alderman Matichek. Alderman Raisler, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess just for clarification, I, I won't support anything under 60. You will not. I will not. Okay. Just for clarification. All right. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Uh, starting in 2013 to start out the mayor's salary at $50,000 uh, with a 2.5% increase per year with full benefits. Uh, and I guess we're done with the discussion. I don't see any lights on. Uh, would you want to call the roll? Self? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? No. Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? Nope. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? No. Riesler? No. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweele? No. Percy? Oh, aye. Uh, six eyes? No. Motion fails. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll make a motion that we uh, keep the salary at 60000 comparable with what the other ones are. That we've researched. Under discussion, Alderman Versi. You're you're comparing to cities that are ten thousand more population than we're than we currently have. That was the reason why I kind of threw the fifty thousand out. I don't 10, think I don't think we have all the data like uh, Alderman Magic said. And I think sixty thousand is a fair amount for what we're looking for in a in a professional mayor full time. My opinion. Alderman Hammond. <coughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, you know, there's a lot of I think this would be a good, I think this would be a good number, I think this would be a good number. Um, to start. There's how many cities in the state, or in the country? Why are we not looking at this a little bit more holistically? Right. Um, you know, I don't, I know we want to try to get something into council, but, you know, I think we, again, have well agreed that a full-time mayor makes sense. Maybe we need to do a little bit more research on, you know, what a per capita or per head. Mm -hmm. um, would you say, Alderman Carlson, $2.76? Yeah. Per 76, 276. 276 per resident. You know, what does that look like versus, and then uh, put that into a, a formula for the electing the, or paying the mayor versus I think it should be 50000 or I think it should be 60000 you know, Maybe we do need to do a little bit more homework on the salary and we've got a little time to do it. Yeah. You know, maybe we should, um, you know, step back from that side and, and, and look at it um, for other, look at other municipalities and, uh, well, it's really interesting if you look at the city city manager form of government, and I know that's a different form of government, 
We've got Beloit, Eau Claire, Fond du Lac, and Janesville that have a city manager pay that person substantially. They have no mayor at all. Now, who's doing the development in that town? They are they, have, they, are, do they have a develop? Do they have a de development manager? Uh, Alderman Carlson. I, I guess a more important question that that's been touched on already is that uh, we still need to have more than just the the city council and the city clerk and the attorney as an elected official. Mm -hmm. So the question of not having a mayor, I mean, that's not even a question. So we, we can't even compare ourselves to a city that does not have a mayor if we're not even going to go that route. Right. I understand that, but I'm making a point that there are cities in this state that have substantial populations that have city managers. And again, that's a different form of government than a city administrator. But those towns, a neighbor as close as Fond du Lac, I'm very familiar with Eau Claire because my dad used to live up there, uh, Beloit, uh, they have no mayor at all. And apparently they're still doing development over there. But, but uh, you don't know, you don't know the, the structure of their government. You don't know if they have a finance director instead of a, like, we, you know, the, the different levels we don't know. Plus a city manager is a statutory position with statutory rights and responsibilities very similar to what a mayor would have, where a city administrator doesn't have those rights. And you, have to, you would have to have a mayor to execute some of those statutory rights, so mm -hmm. right, statutory rules, or statutory things. Alderman Matichek, you're next. Uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate we try and trying to run the city as a business, but we also have to look at, um, you know, it's been compared, do we want to run it? I'm not saying one's better than the other. Uh, uh, perhaps a Walmart or a Target, you walk into one and the other, and they're completely different, yet they're both business models, but you still appreciate one uh, differently than the other. Uh, here in Sheboygan, do we run, want to run things like Beloit? <coughs> do we want to end up like Detroit? Do we want to end up in, in what way, what direction? Do we want to take the city? And who are we going to put into that place to take the direction, of, take the city into that direction? Um, and all I'm hearing is a lot of cut and dry, just cut and paste, if you will, uh, answers and numbers being tossed around, not in-depth look at the cities that we're comparing them to and what direction we want to take the city into. Thank you. Did you make a motion, Alderman Reisler? Yeah, I did, but I don't have, I don't a, second have a second unless someone planned on seconding it. So. We don't have a second. I somebody did. No. Did somebody second that motion for 60000 mm -hmm. I need to go to seventy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, like I'll second. Option. I'll second the... You're at 90. Alderman Reisler's motion. For sixty. Sure. Further discussion? Okay. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Bourne. Uh, again, I... I I don't know what the number is. I don't think anybody in this room knows what the number is at this point. Um, there's been a lot of numbers thrown out, but no rhyme or reason how we came up with any of those numbers. Would it, would it kill us to step back from this one and say, you know, whether, make a recommendation to the council, um, find somebody, put together a subcommittee, whatever the case may be, to research what others are doing um, and put together a, a, a little bit more of a thoughtful process on selecting the salary. Um, you know, we're not that much in a time crunch. We've got until essentially March, so why rush this through in the next uh, you know, four days? Thank you. Alderman Sampson, I believe you're next. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait for you. He's been well, if I may ask, how was the uh, current salary that the mayor is getting paid right now, how was that set? some time ago good question uh, it's been progressively higher as years have gone along I think oh, sure. when when mayor Perez started we were probably somewhere in the 60s and we've mm -hmm. gradually increased it up to what is it going to be next year 73 Six. But what is, what, somewhere is some, what was that based on the CPI wasn't it Originally, it's, it's as I said, it with Mayor Perez and probably who was mayor before that. It's been a gradually inc a gradual increase as time has gone along. Alderman Carlson, are you next? Yes, thank you. I would also agree with um, Alderman Hammond that I, I think that no one here is really qualified just to pull a number out of the sky. That um, we there is no hurry to ram this through. There's no reason why we can't actually put some real facts and figures into this before we just make a decision on some random number we decided on. Well, 
then I would recommend, I think the logical committee for it to go back to would probably go back to salary and grievance. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then come forward with a recommendation after you average 10, 20, 30 cities, whatever you want to, whatever factors you want to take into it and then come back with a number. He's the committee chairman, that's not gonna change. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you. Um, I do feel that we do have two examples. We are on the low end of those two examples for what we are recommending here at, at 60,000. Um, I did some of the math. It's an increase of about $1,500 a year. So at the end of that four years, you're talking in the range of 64,000, 64 and a half, um, somewhere in that range. Um, I, I was comfortable with the last salary that was uh, proposed. I'm comfortable with moving forward with this salary. I think it is something that we should um, take a vote on and move forward with. I, I think this is appropriate. We have two examples that show it's in an appropriate range and, and we can move forward with this. Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you. No offense to Alderman Hammond, but this really isn't rocket science figuring out what a salary should be when you're trying to compare it to just a few other cities. It really isn't. You wanna go make a big deal out of something that's not. How do you set salaries for your employees? Do you, do you average it with you know 50 other companies that are just like yours and say, well, this employee's gonna get that? No, you don't. You set your number. That's what this, this is what the job description is. This is the work detailed. This is how much I'm setting your salary to be. It's, it, this, this doesn't have to be a big, big production. I agree, we can slow down, sure, we're, we're in no rush. But as far as having this big, long, drawn out process to figure out a salary for a mayor, well, let's go back to when, when we first became a full-time mayor. Let's see what that salary was, since it's been progressively more every year with every mayor. Well, why isn't it the way it should be set up is the mayor starts at this salary, ends at this salary. If he gets reelected, he gets to continue on, but it should always go back to starting at the same salary. You know, and that's why, I don't know why it hasn't been that way. I don't know, but we don't need to make a big statistical nightmare, if you may, to find a salary. It's not rocket science to figure out what, what a, a salary should be when you're looking at other cities that have higher population, same form of government. They're more per capita, their property values are more than ours, and we're gonna set them the same or less. I don't see, I don't see how it's a big production. Alderman Sampson, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, I think just, just adding on to Alderman Versi, I don't, I don't think we really have time to dive into the circumstances of these other cities. You know, they may have just felt the need at that time to go 70,000 or 60,000 or 85,000 or whatever their, whatever their conditions were at the time that they made the vote or the decision to go to the salary that they have. So I, I think that's, I mean, we can, we can try to compare, but, but I don't think we understand the circumstances of each individual city and each person that voted on that the reason why they went to whatever salary they salary they have so I think we're pretty comparable I think we have to do what we as a city can do and what we're willing to do and I and I think uh, you know you go back to when uh, Mayor Schramm was in and then we had Mayor Perez somewhere along the line those councils we're making an evaluation on the salary with no personality involved. And that's the same thing we're doing now as we go forward for 13. And, and the same thing when, uh, when the council decided somewhere during Mayor Perez's uh, uh, term what the, what, the, what the salary was gonna be for the next mayor. Uh, but it's been, at one, time, at one point in time, there must have been a base salary for the mayor and there's been an upwards progression as time has gone along probably a cost of living or whatever the case may be with really no personality involved or really no probably perhaps even description of what, what the job description was. Uh, and I guess I agree with Alderman Versi. We can spend uh, another month you know, looking at a bunch of other cities in Wisconsin and other places. Uh, I think we're, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold my nose and vote for 50 as the original one was just voted down but I'm not going any higher than 60 knowing what this job is gonna be and what it is right now with, with, with what Mr. Omodi has taken over with the responsibility for all the departments, including fire and police. Uh, I just have an awful hard time going above 50 and I had to hold my nose to vote for that. Uh, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I'll put it this way. Salaries and grievance sent it here for the discussion mm -hmm. and I appreciate that. I guess what we're looking for is, is a number 
to go back, and the next salary and grievance will not be until the second week of January. And then if we look at getting it to the, the council for the last meeting in January, if it's not held and we act on it right away, we can get it going. If we hold it, it's going to be the middle of February, and we're going to be pushing right up against that deadline the way it is. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to put a committee together and do all this stuff, it's going to go back to salaries and grievance no matter what because that's what we ask for is for it to come back to us with some discussion like we had tonight, which I appreciate. Um, but I guess I would kind of like a number to go back because I don't think – I think we will have time in between that if we want to do some more research, we can do the research beforehand and look at some of the other comparables. But the ultimate decision is going to be made before council of what our recommendation is to come back by us. And at that point in time, again, we can debate the whole thing on the floor again, but we probably will have a little bit more information too. So just because we're voting on 60 doesn't mean 60 is coming back to the council when we're done. We might hash it out a little bit more in salaries and grievance and say, 100. okay, yeah. We might. 50. So, and, right, and it might. So I guess we're just looking for a general number. <laughs> Uh, Alderman Hammond. Uh, just a point of clarification. We're n whatever recommendation we come out with tonight goes back to council. Mm -hmm. So and Grievance has sent it here asking for it to be sent back with a recommendation. I guess I misread that then. That's what we, that's what we had originally asked for. Because it, it was basically, it looks like it was making a recommendation to council. No, we wanted it to be debated by the committee of the whole before it came, because we didn't make it take any action on it. We well, asked for it to go to the committee of the whole to come back to us so that we could... Okay, well, then that changes my opine a little bit because uh, I we thought this was several, going to council on Monday. Right, no, no, we have several weeks. We have a, a good period of time to look at this if we so. Uh, just, just a couple points of clarification for my uh, friend in the second row. First off, when I hire an employee, I'm hiring them based off their qualifications that I can determine through the process. We're setting a salary for something we don't even know. We're setting a salary for something that's a, you know, basically hired by a popular vote. We don't know what qualifications that individual is going to have. So that it's apples and oranges to compare me hiring anybody versus the election process. Secondly, um, any first-year statistics student can tell you when you're putting together a sample size to determine something, 33 is the number, not two. Um, uh, you know, and again, if we want to say, based off it, you know, essentially he's the CEO of the city or she's the CEO of the city, his, raise, his pay should go up, or her pay should go up. $65 million budget the city has. I don't know many CEOs of a, of a company that with a $65 million budget that are making 70 grand. So, I mean, if the argument is, well, we'll just pull out of there because of, of the job, or, or it's not that difficult to figure it out, uh, maybe we're not paying them enough, that position enough. You know, again, that's far-fetched, I understand that, but you know, to say two, two cities relatively close to us is the is the way to make this decision doesn't make any sense. So. Jim. Alderman Kath. Thank you, Chairman. So the, the first motion to keep the mayor full time with reduced pay was just a recommendation <coughs> to the um salaries and grievance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Alderman Van Acker, you're next. Thank you. Just to clarify, the motion on the floor is to amend the current full-time document to start at 60, progress upward to that $64,000 range at 2.5 a year with benefits. That's what we are at. I'd like to, to call, go back to salaries and To go back to, I'd like to call the question. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Let's have a vote on uh, $60,000 with benefits with a 2.5% increase, and if it passes, to go back to salary and grievance. Bell? Aye. Warren? No. Carlson? No. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? No. Heidemann? No. Path? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? No. Riesler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweely? Aye. Versi? Aye. Eight six. Motion Play. passes. <laughs> so it's going back to uh, salary and grievance with a recommendation of sixty thousand dollars plus benefits, with a two point five percent right. increase over the four years. I guess there's no further discussion warranted. 
go ahead, Alderman just a, Raceworks. Just a side to that, if anyone has any other information before salaries and grievance, if you want to get it to us, we'll forward it to the committee. If we have other examples, we have other things that we want to do, I'm more than willing to take any input that anybody has. Well, you might want to ask, you might want to ask your new Nine, HR, eight. you might want to ask your HR manager to do any, to do any research that you think is appropriate, Alderman Raisler, before your next meeting. Sure. I, I guess I'm looking at if someone else has some other mm -hmm. aspects that they want to throw in, like the last one that we just got and stuff like that. I, I'm, sure. Yeah. Or input at that meeting that night. That's that's fine too. So. We'll in our comments. Alderman Cobb. Thank you, Chairman. Would this really need to go back to um, salaries and grievance? I mean, it's going to go back to your committee, and then it's going to come back to this, or back no, to... Back to the committee we'll from, from salaries and grievance, no matter what. Could we just skip the uh, salaries and grievance and send it right to the... No, council? because that's what we voted on. No, that's what we voted for, so... Yeah. And that's what we had asked for. We had asked for a recommendation back from the committee. I don't think it would have to come back to this committee no, again. No, when you're right done with it, it can no. go to the council. Right. No. Well, it'll go to the council right from salaries and grievance. Back to salary and After January 9th. That's your next meeting, January 9th. The next thing on the agenda is the next meeting date, and that will be that will be determined. Uh, I can promise you, unless there's some kind of an extreme emergency, it won't be before January. But I, I appreciate uh, appreciate your attendance tonight and the attendance at the number of meetings we've had over the last few weeks. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to, to adjourn. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.